All right, DJ, what are you going to do today? Okay, so, I've been seeing a lot of graduated bugs lately. Um, people caught them online or whatever it is. And I wanted to show a couple of variations, because there's many ways of doing them. Happens to be one of my favorite haircuts, so I've played around with this technique quite a lot. Plus, I come from Bobland, which is with Al Sassoon. So I've had a lot of experience playing around with working these shapes. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a few different variations. So I'm going to start on this left side and I'm going to do the most classic traditional version of it, which is also the most difficult version. And if it's not perfect, it doesn't work. That's why this haircut is such a difficult haircut to do. And then after I've done that, I'm going to show you a much easier way of doing it. Not as time consuming and very easy to do in the salon. And then I'm going to show you a variation of starting it backwards. So actually doing the graduated bob a different way. Um, the most common way is to work from the back towards the front because obviously it gets heavier. But I'm actually going to do a different variation on this side. I'm going to start from the front and work into the back. Some of you guys may have seen me do that before, but it's not bad to see it a couple of times. So just to clarify, you're not doing one haircut. No. You're doing different do a, versions. Of different things. I'm, we're doing graduated bob today. So okay. there's many different variations. This is not going to be a bob with graduation, it's going to be a graduated bob. And what that means is it's going to have graduation in the back, right? Up to about the occipital area. And then there's a bob sat on top of that graduation. So there'll be a break in the line that you see. A bob with graduation would be a line, a bob, and that bob line would be beveled. So a completely different haircut. Um, I have done that tutorial before, but we can do that again another time as well. So, this mannequin has this natural center part in, um, so I'm going to work with that. We've got mannequins from Hair Art again. This is the Mia. Uh, the one I usually get, uh, the Claire or whatever her name is, uh, they don't really have them right now, so I'm going with this one. For the lighting? Yeah. yeah. So you can wear one. Alright. Good? Yep. Alright, so. I'm going to tilt the head a slight bit forward just so I can get into this area. I just have to be aware that the head is tilted forward. So the start of the haircut, what happens with this haircut is it actually pivots off this parting and it climbs up the parting so that you get this nice gradual build up on that weight line. If I section away like here and then just do this and then pull this onto it, it's just too heavy. You see that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But again, this haircut is a continual fluid buildup of weight vertically and horizontally. So, start the haircut at the occipital. So I put my comb on the occipital ridge and you can see that it's about that thick. So I have options as to where to start. If I start at the base of the occipital, obviously I'm going to push the weight lower. And it kind of gives it that flow to the haircut. Then if I go a little bit higher in the center of the occipital, that's the most protruding part of the head shape. So it actually pushes the buildup of weight out more, so I get more expansion this way. Then if I start at the top of the occipital bone, it enables me to put it higher. Keep it a little bit on the leaner side of my area. I'm going to opt for that. Just so everyone knows, you're going to do this a little longer, so you can recut it and show a different way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to do two variations on this side. So my first section is a vertical diagonal section. It's no thicker than one of my fingers. That's the appropriate finger. Nice, <laughs> nice finger. If it's thicker than, thicker than my finger, then I'll start to over-direct it unnecessarily into the center of itself, and it'll start to create all these weird corners. A little wider at the bottom? Yeah, so vertical diagonal forward section. So pull that hair straight out from the head. Now I don't need to pull the hair down or anything like that because I'm working vertically. So all I do is I actually pull the hair 90 degrees straight out from the head shape and we cut the angle with the finger angle. 
you also have to keep in mind the mannequin's head is tilted forward as well yeah so 90 degrees straight out straight out from the head and that doesn't mean i'm pulling it straight back or anything that it means it's coming straight out from where it's actually into the head mm -hmm. there's a 90 degree everywhere on the head shape and so that's important to understand so vertical diagonal section my body position my right leg is literally where the section is and then my left foot is a little slightly in front of that so it allows me to kind of swing my body around so I can actually see what I'm cutting. All right. If I stand like this, then I can't see what I'm doing and I'll actually start to pull the hair up and it will cut a layer instead of graduation. Graduation is a build up of white. It means it's shorter at the bottom and it gets longer towards the top. So I won't copy the head shape, I'll work against the head shape. If I copy the head shape, then it's a layer. So I'm going to start a little bit heavier. And what you'll see is the section angle in my fingers create a V. That makes it graduation. It has to get shorter at the bottom. And I don't go past the second knuckle because my fingertip, my fingers get wider towards the bottom. And that would be a layer instead of a graduation. So again, I'm, I'm going to leave it slightly heavier. It's mannequin here. My next section, slightly higher up the parting and more diagonal. So I'm going to actually pivot towards horizontal as I move up that parting. This is the most classic variation of this haircut. This is Vinasa Su. This is how I learned to cut this haircut originally. So the, the sectioning alone is going to make you do two things. One, <laughs> lollipops in May. <laughs> it's, it's slightly higher than the first one. So that means in order to have a guide, you're going to pull down, which is going to build the weight, right? And it's also slightly in front of the first one, so then you're going to have to comb slightly back. Exactly. So that's going to give you the graduation yeah. and the more length towards the mm -hmm. It's one of those haircuts where you start doing one thing and you'll pivot to doing another. Basically, I'm cutting the graduation with finger angle. I'll over-direct to get heavier towards the front. As soon as I pivot to horizontal, my finger angle will be the shape and it will be the elevation that will continue that graduation. Such a cool haircut to work on. Not easy though, but without practice. Great haircut. So, number two, back into number one. So over directing back into that first section. What that's going to do is it's going to make two longer than number one horizontally. My finger angle, again, and the guide is taking care of the vertical distribution of weight. Again, don't cut past that second knuckle because your fingers actually get wider. Darren Jones is saying hello, and it's great to see you live again. Thank you. Yeah, we were, we were busy last week, so we didn't really get to do any tutorials for you. Our intention is to do a few a week, but we're also... Uh, this we is a busy a month. We travel a lot. Yeah. We educate a lot. So now, my next section, sorry, slightly higher up the park. There's DJ at neck. A little bit more. So this is section number three and it's changed yeah. of how high you're starting off and how wider so, it is at the bottom. So what I have to think about now is the level of over direction that I want to use. How heavy do I want it to get towards the front? So I can bring all of this back into number one. That's going to be too heavy I feel. So what I like to do is until I get to that horizontal line, I over direct into my previous. So two into one, three into two, four into three, and so on. So what I'll do now is I'll get rid of number one. Coming out of the way. Out of the way. I just take two and I'll bring three back and down. So now your elevation yeah, is actually elevation lower. In this area you can see. There's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we have a question from Great Hair Day Studio. Hi DJ, how would the way the hair section is held be different for a left-handed person? I'm left-handed and cut with my left hand. <laughs> um, it's exactly the opposite. So obviously on this, my thumb is taking me in the direction so my fingertips point up. If I was left-handed, it would be my right hand my thumb would be put set in the way and my fingertips would be pointed in and then it would be the opposite on the other side so the thumb always leads the way and what it's for is it's basically so that I can actually bring it to the guy mm. if I was to try and do it this way I'd probably move the guy so mm. it's all protection so you can see now the graduate bot part of it coming into play so the next section, slightly higher in the parting, pivoting out a little bit more. Yeah. Say hi to James. Hi hey, James. This, uh, again, bring it into the previous, so you can see now this is definitely more horizontal. So it's not over direction anymore, it's elevation. And what that's doing is it continually creates that graduation, that build up of weight. So again, I don't need the first section or the second, I just need the third and the fourth section. Would you, would you adjust the head shape at any point? Not right now, but I need to. I know where I'm at with it. Because I feel the head being tilted. Some people have a tendency to pull super low and that's what makes it look very weighty. Yeah, I mean, you could do, obviously. I mean, it's all about being in control of the haircut. But I, uh, when I made that adjustment, I knew automatically where straight out is and what's the previous because I can see where the head is. If you're not so confident in that, maybe go back to being upright. How can one stay consistent with keeping the parting clean. I've noticed my lines have been a, been dirty. I recently downsized my business. Now I can really focus on cranking out better work. Um, well, when you're, when you're in a hurry, you tend to get sloppy, and I do too, because you're trying to stay on time. True. Clen cleanliness and being disciplined sometimes can be time consuming. It can be, yeah. but it is essential to that um, finished look that you're after I don't know to me it's, it's uh, I don't think a lot kind of, of a therapy thing for me you also don't, don't have a client waiting for you no, right yeah. here so you have the luxury of time True. and I remember being busy in a salon on a Saturday I mean I didn't cross check that often just because you just have to get it get it over with right and that's that's why I prefer education because I can slow things down so again, bringing it down into the previous section. So now I'm fully horizontal diagonal. So I'm actually cutting the shape of the haircut. And I'm using the elevation now to create that graduation. So, now so from, I'm in the bob part of the haircut. Now, now from the bird's, yeah, bird's eye view. Yeah. Now so now I'm kind of building the house. I've put the foundation in down here. But now it's with, with the name triangular. Um, comes into play. Yeah. So literally what's happening is my fingers are following the angle of that section all the way through to the front. And the section gets lower towards the front, so does my elevation. Cool. So as you can see, the line changes now. It jumps up and around. So that's what's going to happen. That's the difference between a graduated bob and a bob with graduation. The line is interrupted. So now my sections will be parallel all the way through until I get to the parting. So I'm literally just creating the bob now. We had another question earlier. Darren says, thank you. You needed that for answering that. So my elevation now changes. I'm actually going to bring everything down into that last section I just did. As soon as I find that desired angle, that's where I stop, and I then bring everything down. So now I'll start to build that weight line. All right, we have an interesting question here from Ambrosia19. 
I run into the problem with growth patterns around the nape. Is undercutting or keeping it blunt the best of options? There's many different things. Now, one little thing that I've seen, which I really like, and this was from Gerard actually, and he did it when we were doing the scissor versus razor class. This little area in here, took that out, and he literally took that to like a finger's width. So he got rid of it. And then the graduation just sat on top of it. It really was cool, and that probably works for those unruly hairlines that we have sometimes, or cowlicks in that area. Hard to demonstrate on a mannequin, though. It really is, yeah. but um, you literally just undercut that tiny bit. Cool. Hope that helps, Ambrosia. One nine. Now look at the the section. is super horizontal. All a lot more than when you started off. Yeah. So you work your way from vertical. You establish the build up of weight. And you are elevating here. Yeah, just very slightly. Though. A lot of people, I feel like this area, they all end up just cutting like an outline yeah, with the one line. There's no flow. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you can see now, because it's horizontal. That's creating the movement back and forth. Uh, I, someone was saying that they made vertical sections and it created more movement. Hmm. Vertical, if it comes through, it's going to restrict the movement. It's going to make it stand still more. So I like to keep it more horizontal if I want to see it move back and forth. If I want to restrict movement, I'll come through vertically, which is what I'm going to do on the next head. Interesting. Oh, what's that on the TV? Oh, it's DJ. Good to hear what are your thoughts on sectioning off the nape area, doing the graduation, then taking down the crown section after? Good question. What would be um, easier for a newer stylist? We kind of discussed that when I first started this haircut, that sometimes what people will do is they'll section off, they'll put the graduation in, and then they'll just pull everything down. What you notice the difference is, everything is fluid. From the, from the first section to the last section. It's all connected. There's no cut this bit, attach this bit to it. T so, TJ. A lot of DJ Quintero is asking if we use uh, thinning scissors. <laughs> if you ever use thinning scissors. <laughs> yes, he has. I bet he does. No, if you. Me? No. Never. I think I use them on my own hair. I think he was just messing. I know. So there's the elevations definitely below 90. Yeah. So really now what you're going to start to see is that weight line become more defined. Mm. So now it's just a stationary guideline in a sense. It's and then, everything down. So now it becomes what we call external graduation. Somebody mentioned that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Triangular external graduation. Exactly. Triangular external graduation which is a graduated bar. And your, your elevation is higher in the back, and, and then, then in the front, it actually is much closer to zero, because it's closer to a, a perimeter. Well, that front bit should be the heaviest point. It should just barely be graduated. Somebody earlier said, they can watch you cut hair all day. Thank you. So, again, continuing through the same that way. I have a question, DJ. Yeah. So, just, me. Sorry. Go. Just before you ask me that. So now that I'm above this part of the head, this round of the head, mm -hmm. the hair has to travel over that. So it's very important that I know where that hair is going to fall. So I don't just do this, pull that hair over here when it lifts there. So it's very much now you gotta look at it and cut it where it lifts. So I only cut like maybe an inch at a time because that's when the head shape curves and changes every inch in a sense. So basically you're just elevating the hair, you're not overdirecting it. No. No over direction whatsoever. I only started the over direction when I was working with vertical sections. And as soon as it went to horizontal, your, sh your shape is created by your finger position, your finger angle. Yes. DJ on the other side is not going to do an inside out, or possibly? No. When do you choose to use the smaller set teeth of a comb 
are the wider ones? Well, the, everything, good question on that one. Everything's really governed by, not me, this. Density. Everything, the haircut is determined by what happens. So it's the density and the texture, and it's me controlling the hair. So it's finer texture of hair, so I'm using the finer teeth in the comb so I can control it better. Most of the answers you, I guess you guys already have the answers to the questions. To be honest with you, hair cutting is common sense. Most of the stuff. What complicates it is all those educators that are not like so. Some of us are trying to be different to other people, so we name things different. It's not in the dictionary, I'm not using the word. I forgot what I was, was going to ask. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> it will come back to you. No, so, last okay. section on this. Again, just making sure I cut where the hair falls. All the way through. Again, it's being brought down to that lower elevation around the occipital area. People just joining in, this video, of course, we'll, we'll save it and it'll be shared. It'll be shared for 24 hours and then I'll put it on my Facebook. Right, which will be on basically permanently. Yeah, and we're going to start putting them on the website. And also here at the salon. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing those that just joined in you're not going to actually blow dry and refine this you're just no. going to show it a whole other way to cut a graduated bob I'm right after technique I'm, yeah. you guys can look at pictures of graduated bobs you get what it is i just wanted to show you a few different variations this is the most classic variation that i've done obviously i would come in now blow dry and then refine the outline mm, i don't like it so how i've done this one is by starting with a vertical diagonal section I put the graduation in with finger angle. Mm -hmm. I then went higher up the parting and I pivot out a little bit more. And then I did that all the way through. So when you climb up the parting, it's not pivoting from one point. That's when you get that mushroom kind of heaviness when you pivot from one point. Mm -hmm. But because I moved and I pivoted, it's a much more fluid build up of weight. Mm -hmm. This is the classic Vidal Sassoon version. Mm -hmm. So now I want to show you a different one. Wait, before you do that. No. <laughs> uh, we have a nice question. Yeah. Stylist Julianne, who, whose name sounds really familiar. I feel like I might be following on Instagram as well. How long did it take you for you to feel like you were really, or did a really good graduate bob and one that you were proud of? Uh, great question. Um, I'm very fortunate that I went to, went to hair school at Vidal Sassoon. And I also was an apprentice at Vidal Sassoon Academy, and I also became a teacher there. Um, one of the first haircuts that I mastered was the graduated bob, and it's what kept me in a job at Vidal Sassoon. Because what you have to do is you have to pass all the haircuts, you have to be able to do them perfectly, and then you move to the next one. And I couldn't cut a, a one-length bob to save my life. Like me earlier? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was doing a graduated bob, and I was doing it with one of my mentors, Stephen Moody. And I wasn't supposed to be doing that haircut. Never heard of him. And I did it, and it was apparently it was good. And uh, I was kind of on my way out of the student at the time because I couldn't get the, the one leg bob down. But because I got the graduated bob down, they kind of kept me around. So, so, how, so how long did it take you to feel comfortable or to master it? It took how long away my training was a couple of years. Um, and then when I became a teacher, then I became better at it as well because I know the superfluousness of things in that. So, all right. So sometimes it's one of those haircuts that people never get. But do you think your graduated bobs now are better than they were? Yeah. At two years into it. Yeah, way better. Um, all right. The fact is that you know knowing how to do the more different variations that mm -hmm. makes it better, you know. Yeah. So that's what I want to show you now. I just showed you the most difficult way of doing it. And I put that variation in the Paul Mitchell cutting system. It's the hardest way of doing it. This is the variation I should have put in the system. And I'm going to show you it now. All right, so version number two happening now. So what I'm going to do at the top of the head of the round, I'm going to set you away the top. So I'm getting rid of the roof. 
Okay. And I'm actually going to cut this first, and then I'm going to place that on top of it. So now you're going to do vertical sections? I'm going to go through this vertically all the way through. Will this restrict movement? It'll kind of make it a little bit more solid. And that's the difference when you don't do this variation that I've just done perfect, because it moves around so much. If it's not perfect, it's never going to fall in place when it's supposed to. So this variation will restrict that movement backwards and forwards and keep it in place more. And that's through using vertical sections. Anytime you use vertical sections, it makes this stronger and it makes it flatter. Mm -hmm. If I use horizontal sections, it makes this rounder and heavier. Okay. So, same thing as before. I'm going to start at the occipital. Down. So, vertical diagonal sections. Yep. Um, Tunisia, from Tunisia, what's up? Hello. Thanks well, for joining us. Yes. No, All the way from Africa. Nanuch, North African. Uh, DJ, will you ever teach at the Mastery again? I'm not sure. Depends if they book me. I generally do like one class a year now. I used to go quite often there, but busy doing other things as well. So, first section. So I'm going to graduation. So not too different from the first section not of the last. So. Basically, it's the same. It's what happens next that changes it. Next section, slightly higher, same angle. So I won't pivot. I'm not going to move towards horizontal. I'm just going to keep it vertical. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to create this haircut by finger angle and over direction. Okay. So every single section that I take, I'm actually just going to send it straight back to the door behind me. So it literally just straight back, and I don't pull the hair down. It's finger angle that's going to create the graduation. So you're just repeating what you did for the first section all the way through? Yes. And now you're going to use over direction back? Exactly. To create the shape? To get heavier towards the front. Pull away from what you want to keep. So I'm doing that in two ways. So I'm pulling away from what I want to keep vertically by using finger angle. And I'm pulling away from what I want to keep horizontally by pulling it back. So, <clears throat> clarifying here, even though your elevation is 90 degrees, you're, you're not layering. Nope. It's the finger angle. It's what you cut that makes it the layer. Because I'm working vertically, it's finger angle, not elevation. There's no point in me elevating the correct technique. Who's <laughs> that dude? Wow. So straight back. Uh, another question. Would you say it's better to stand at the corner when executing this finger angle? Or do you always stand behind and use your super height, bend your legs and see it from the side? Well, here's the deal. To go back to what you were doing, man. It was I know. So basically, what I'm doing is if I do this, I can't see what I'm doing. Right? So, what happens is I start to pull the hair up. That's layering, it's not graduation. All right. So, by me putting this foot forward, that allows me to have more horizontal landscape mm -hmm. or real estate, so I can actually swing the top half of my body around. My feet stay. Here's the deal, if I stand here, right, with both feet, yeah. my arms are attached to my body. So, regardless of what happened, where I try to pull it, I'm always going to pull it to me. So my body, my feet, needs to be where the guide is. There's no way around that. The stationary guide, yeah. at this point. It's not really stationary yet. It's going to be fun. 
when I get to the round of that. So you're not really straight back nor at the corner, you're like in the middle. I'm pulling everything straight back. So literally, each tooth of the cone is like a scrambled head. It's just going that way. It's like me elevating everything up to the ceiling. But that's the ceiling, and this is the top of the head. So again, it's understanding the landscape that you're working with as well. Alright. So I'm at the natural round of the head shape here, where it turns into the sides. So basically once I get to that round, all of this can be condensed and pulled back into this because my guide is in the back. So now it'll start to go yeah. to the same spot. Now I can become a stationary guide. Alright. So you notice my sections stay the same. I don't get horizontal and pull the hair down. That's the hard thing to get uh, around if you're used to doing that. When I teach this class, it's a very, very hard habit to break. People want to do this and pull it down. Keep it vertical and pull it back. Keep that angle. So again, it's just understanding that you pull away from what you want to keep. And there's many ways of doing that. Ooh, salon's getting busier. It's, yeah, that, it's that time of the day, people getting off work. So you see, I just pull it back, I don't pull it down. So the question I was going to ask earlier, yeah. DJ, you don't have to do this, oh. these tutorials, or we don't have to do this, but we enjoy doing it because we enjoy to cut hair and teach people. Yeah. But why, why, do you, why do you want to do this? Um, well, being a career educator, I've not been an educator for like two weeks or a couple of years or anything like that, I, from the beginning of my career. And so I see a lot of education out there, and it's okay, it's not, but I don't really, not, I don't consider it merely education, it's just showing them something, something, you know what I mean? Um, so I'd rather, I'd rather do these tutorials where you're learning the exact thing like this, you know what I mean? Very fortunate to have been in a, a company that you know kind of started all this and it's helped to know the actual facts of what things do. Because sometimes people don't know yet. You now there's a lot of educators out there. They're great, but they've only been doing it for a little bit of time. They've not learned it all yet. So I wanted to do it like you wanted to do it to so just spread common knowledge. You know, this is stuff we do, we get paid to do this, but we wanted to do it and give it away so that people know what we're doing. Knowledge destroys fear. So now it's stationary, so I don't need to waste time and go through all of this section by section. If you're working in a salon, you're working against the clock. And I think it's, it's important to be a hybrid hair cutter. That is understand the integrity of, of structured haircuts. So, so, so this is basically what's going to make the G-Bot, the G-Bot right here. Yeah. And that was just created by Finger Angle. Yeah, watch this now. Pull all that back. See the elevation? Mm -hmm. Straight back. I did not pull it down at any point. Let's see, cross, so now, cross check it too, so maybe people can see yeah. that it's nice, nice. And then obviously, you do that after that. Cool. So, let's look at it horizontally. I think the main reason why we're doing this too, man, is just to have some fun. Wow. Well, DJ and I travel a lot. That's why we weren't doing something last week because we were both away. And we get bored in the middle of the week and we really enjoy what we do. That same feeling you get when you cut hair for the first time or first few times in the kitchen, that feeling, we, we still feel that way. But we want to share as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. I personally like it because it's beautiful. I, I was going to say, I know a lot of people really, really want to be good at haircutting. Yeah. And they want to be good at everything, but 
We, we talk about haircutting. Well, to me, it's the, like I said, it, it destroys that fear. The more knowledge you have, it, it gets rid of the anxiety, you know, worrying yeah. about, is it going to look right? But a lot of people... You know, I know if we do this, it's going to look like that. Right. You know I mean, there's no like in between. But earlier, you were saying, annoying. earlier you were saying you were very fortunate you went to Sassoon. I did. I had the best training in the world. But not everyone has that no. fortune, right? So but we're here. Right. <laughs> and then not everyone can afford to fly to San Diego take or to LA, take a yeah. class. So this might be the best way to get to reach those people. Yeah, it's the digital era, isn't it? Yeah. So now the top, all I do is I just place this like we do. When I did that last hair. So, so basically your cross check is your guide now. Yeah, and all I'm put, placing the bob part now on top. Basically I'm putting the roof on. Ashley Bitty. Bitty. Uh, <laughs> would you all come to would y'all come Girl. to Atlanta? Uh, you've been to Atlanta many times. Yeah, I go to Atlanta quite a lot. You just have to keep your eye on where, where we are, the schedules and stuff. So again uh, looking at where it's going to fall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hot lantern. Okay. Not a lot of hairs coming off because no. you've already cut it once. Cut it once so. Okay. So this is the last haircut on this side. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do something else on the other side. Yeah, and do a completely different variation on the other side. Oh, look, there's Rob in the mirror. Alright, so that's that done. Two right. different variations. One classic where you pivot from horizontal yeah. vertical excuse me, to horizontal. Fluid all the way through. And then one where I just sectioned yeah. away the top. So, and I used vertical sectioning and used over direction to bend the bar. And what it does, it doesn't let it move as much. It restricts that movement. Cool. So now let's do the other side. You can flip the tripod a little. So many, many people I, I feel are appreciate appreciative enjoying this. <laughs> so, working it from the front, the benefit of doing it this way is achieving the exact length that you want and starting from that. Okay. Instead of playing that guessing game back here, um, I've been doing hair for quite a long time, so I kind of know what it's going to do. But what if you didn't? You know what I mean? And you're working on a client. You're running out of time, so let's show you a little bit more efficient variation of it. So it kind of goes back to almost like a old firefly kind of mm. technique. So I'm going to section the front away from the back, so I can work this first, and then I'll connect into it. So now what I would do is I would establish the lens. So we'll, we'll go kind of like traditional V-bar. I don't know about that one. Alright. So that's going to be jawline. Yeah, the length of it. So now I'm going to build off that and build the weight and graduate this. The reason why I'm not going to do this is that's too much dancing around. I'd rather get this in, nail that in, and then connect that to it. Just to work a little bit more efficiently. Next section. So now this variation 
obviously I'm working more horizontally to begin with and then I'll start to work more vertical afterwards so it's the opposite variation of what I just did so it's basically just working in reverse yeah. and what's once again the benefit of doing it this way is you know what length you're going to end up with at the front right away so i'm bringing it down onto that first section with a slight elevation just like i was through the front here but i'm starting from that point it'll have a different finish though some something about it won't look exactly the exactly same. so again down onto that first section And your fingers are a lot more horizontal onto the head shape too. So immediately you start to see it bevel more too. Mm -hmm. That's what that horizontal does. Anytime you build weight horizontally, it creates this kind of buildup of weight. If you cut it vertically, you physically cut it so it's like that. Stiffer. So it's a more swollen buildup, more beveled buildup of weight. It's the heavier of the two. So, again, anytime you work with horizontal, you will create more movement backwards and forwards. And I think what's cool about this is, you know, you get to see it, and then you get to go try it, you know. Give us a little cross check, see what's, what it's doing. nice heavy buildup of weight. Why is it that clean? Because I took consistent sections that weren't massive <laughs> and I controlled it and tensions. And that's just, that's just proof that pulling hair down, right? Pulling away from what you want to keep, the top's going to get longer. Yeah. It's woke, woke haircutting. So the question was, is this a traveling guideline or a stationary guideline? Stationary. Everything's been brought to the same elevation. This is a method Scott Cole used to do, apparently. It's actually an old classic Vidal Sassoon method. The fact that you say Scott Cole, Scott Cole came from Vidal Sassoon just like myself. And just like Scott, I also did the same thing. I put a lot of Vidal Sassoon stuff into the Paul Mitchell world. Like he did. So, last section. So, elevation's really low. Bringing it all to that same elevation I was at before. Doing, yeah. David, we're doing graduated bobs, different versions. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So the, the difference is it's hugging that face more. Mm. Because I put it more horizontally, you can see that. Obviously, this is longer. But we're really sitting on that jaw. So now, joining into the back. There's so many different ways you could do this, too. If I wanted to, I could do it vertically. And then follow the head shape. And just follow that all the way around. Ooh, let's try it. Let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it. Never been done before. It's a premiere. I'm gonna do it this way though, man. Inside the fingers? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm like yoga. Yeah, yeah. Chakra. On the outside. Chakra. Plus the outside, 
I don't naturally build weight that way. The elbow makes me want to layer it. And your fingers tend to curve. It moves differently, it goes up. So if I work on the inside, my fingers, you know, I swing my arms to pull down. So it's also a safety mechanism to maintain the being graduated. Well, you're kind of doing it the way you were going to do it. This way. Minus the diagonal sections. Well, I would have moved to uh, horizontal if I had done it that way. So now I'm just going to pivot. So this is. Uh, and another variation. We weren't really experimenting this, now. Yeah. Just to show you that there's many different ways you could connect. I'm choosing to not use any over direction. If I use over direction, it's going to get heavier in the back. So it will be a combination of round and triangular. Maybe a little too much to handle for a beginner. It's a lot of hair, a lot of angles. Cool. So you vert all vertical. I'm just going to keep it vertical, yeah. If it was diagonal, what would be? Oh, well, diagonal just covers more real estate. So it pushes the weight quicker into a different direction. Not so much over direction. Yeah, I don't need to over direct if I was to use angle, it would push the weight that way more. So if I just keep it vertical, the weight lives within that section. So I'm not pushing it either way, I'm keeping it here. Are we both wearing Adidas hats? Yeah. Did you make that observation or was that someone else? No, just now. I oh. <laughs> so you can see the weight line is going to consistently stay on the same spot. So again, taking it into the nape. In order for it to be graduation, it has to get shorter towards the bottom. So it actually has to go against the head shape. It can't mimic the head shape. This is definitely traveling into yeah. the previous. I'm not over directing, I'm just moving. Every section is coming straight out from the head. Yeah, the question was over direction to the previous or traveling, which I would traveling. say means the same thing though. Well, but it is the previous. If you over direct to the previous, then you're moving it back, you're moving it forwards. I don't want to do that. So I'm just pulling it straight out from where it lives, and I'm using part of the previous as the guide. Hmm. Again, pull away from what you want to keep. So right now, I don't want it to get heavier towards the back. So the only point that's pulling away is my finger angle. So I can keep this heavier. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what it looks like. Mm, not bad. It's not a bad way to do it, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's it's another, another variation. You pick the way you want to do it. And that's where you're going. What, why, how, and when, and then what if. I always get asked, what if you do this? What if you do that? Do it and find out, because that's what I did. That's how I learned. Get a box of mannequins and just play around with different variations and different levels of over direction and elevation and see how that affects weight distribution in your haircut. Don't just cookie cut and copy things that you've already done. Experiment. It's 
experiment is a fancy word. It's not basically, it's a word. I'm over here. <laughs> Last section. So I hope you guys learnt something from this one. Learnt. And if you guys have any requests. Go ahead, send us a message. Let us know what you want us to do, and we can do that. There's so many different ones that we want to teach. There's so kinda, many mannequins. We want you guys to kind of let us know what you want to say. And so you can see the difference. A couple of different variations of cutting graduated bobs. The weight line sort of stays level so though. so heavy. Yeah, it's it? super heavy. Yeah, so there we go. We just did a new variation. Maybe. So this side I did two different versions. I did the classic where you pivot your sections all the way through, over directing to the previous, elevating to the previous, until you get to that desired angle you want the weight to flow through to the front. Then it becomes external. All these sections come down to that. Mm -hmm. Then I did a different variation. I chose to work more vertically all the way through to keep it more restrictive. The more it moves around, if you didn't cut it perfect, it will move to a different place. So that kind of helps. And what you do with that is you section away the top, completely underneath. Everything over it back onto this graduation. Then place the roof on top of it. And then our other variation that we just did was starting it from the front putting the bob in, in the front, using a low elevation horizontally, and then we were going to kind of extend that into the back, kind of firefly-ish, mm -hmm. but we decided not to, and so to actually just show you how to do it vertically. And get a and different version. In, yeah. Yeah. And then you could play around with all the direction, let's say if you wanted it to drop off. I like, I like this side, I like how it arches. Yeah. It's cooler. It's more triangular for me, that mm -hmm. variation. Yeah. yeah. So we just got a bunch of questions. I'm going to yeah, shoot, awesome. shoot them at you. Awesome. All, right. All right. So would you say any of these variations could be done with a razor? Of course, of course, yeah. I mean, anything you can cut with scissors, you can cut with a razor. If your teeth are sharp enough, you could bite the hair off. It doesn't make a difference. It just gives it a different effect. That's where you're positioning the hair and your the, finger angle. The mechanics and structure is the same. The tool you use is up to you. All right, next question. What kind of guest do you think this would be best on? What kind of guest? Somebody um, that has maybe a flat, yeah. a flat occipital bone or a flat crown. Kind of textures of hair. They want to keep the length. Yeah. Yeah. You want to push the weight higher. You want to draw, 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 draw out the face a little bit more. Someone that maybe doesn't have like a really big chin or a big nose because they that would draw attention to that. Big uh, okay, next question. Oh yeah, so for the. For the tutorials in the future, yeah. variations of pixies. pixies. That's, we just had a conversation about pixies yesterday. Yeah, someone asked, what's the definition of a pixie and a crop? Um, I, the, the name of the haircut is a crop. There's no pixie haircut. That's just a new term that's come around. Um, but the pixie, yeah, you could do many different variations of length and stuff. <laughs> Not now, dude. Not now. So, yeah, we could do that. We could show you some crops and some pixie shapes, for sure. Yeah, all right. People are enjoying it. Change the bob shape, for sure. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh yeah, last question. What are your thoughts on standing versus a stool? I'm about 5'8". She's taller than me. And Aaron. Uh, you should uh, don't let height ever be kind of an issue. You need the movement to put yourself in certain places. If you're cutting a line, you can sit down all day long. But when you're moving around, you need to put your feet in different places. So it restricts your movement, which would restrict the flow of the haircut. And it becomes more uh, visual. It's never organic. Remember? All right. Cool. Good. Yep. Cool. Awesome. So um, next week, maybe.
Next week we'll do one. This weekend I'm going to be in San Francisco at uh, Taylor Hair Salon. I'm going to do a knowledge disposal class there and do a look and learn. I'm uh, looking forward to that. I used to work at the last season in San Francisco and I'm not going back since, so it should be a good time. And uh, just keep, in, keep up to date with us. Follow us on Instagram. We're going to put this video up there later and we'll also put it on Facebook and on the website. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. All right.